having beer with your bangers and stuff. <laughs> Are licorice. Molasses is really good for you, it's good for your hair, it's good for your nails, your skin. <laughs> Hope of his salvation and survival lay in a change of climate and they recommended Barbados. The striking things about it is the bouquet and, and so on is starting to pick up that background of the sugarcane juice that it comes from. Those earliest days, they would use something called a demijohn to transport that rum, but it's made of glass, so long term, it was not the most practical piece of equipment. That goes to the heart stone, you know, and then you have to more closer to the boiling point of water. Get into the the more space between us? Yeah, the tunnels are quite narrow. Oh, they're not <laughs> Welcome to Beige and Lifestyles where we give you the best. The best of Barbados and all of its hidden treasures. Today we, not today, this week we are with the Barbados Rum Experience. It's all about Barbados Rum, the history of rum, and where rum is going. And all things yummy, except for my, not for my Kella, because she can't drink rum yet. And I don't like it. Yeah, she's not, she's not old enough yet, but anyways, we are here at beautiful St. Nicholas Abbey. And we just came from Mount Gabriel, we'll let you guys see what it was like and take you through day two, three, six. It's a full week of fun, learning events, and lots of rum drinking. So, if you love rum, you like drinking rum, this video's for you. you like history of rum, this Barbados, this video is for you. So, keep watching. to the beautiful island of Barbados and welcome to Mount Gay, the birthplace of rum. I am Tina, that station. Of course, everyone should know Miguel. Before we can talk about Mount Gay, we need to understand a bit more about the island of Barbados itself. This is an accidental island. A few centuries ago, there was an accident deep in the ocean between some tectonic plates. There was a shift, a collision, and a void was created. As time went by, the void was filled the sand, coral, fossil, and debris. It eventually became a solid enough mass to push itself over the sea surface, making us the only Caribbean island formed that way. Our neighbors are made predominantly from volcanic activity. We're made of coral limestone. We have many rivers, we have no lakes, we don't have waterfalls here. Instead, we will have underground streams, we have natural cavities, and we have wells. That's where we're taking you now to see one of our wells. Water in Barbados is 95 to 98% drinkable directly off the surface. So you guys are more than welcome to come, stick your hands in here, touch it, taste it. I go first, you can see it's safe. <laughs> it's gonna taste remarkably just like water. First ingredient used to make a Mount Gay rum, that is perhaps the most important thing we do here. There it is. Right Smells like Christmas. Now we have two molasses houses here at Mount Gay. The one over here can hold 500 tons. The one we're going to enter can hold 400 tons. Each well you see can hold 100 tons each. They're roughly about 15 feet deep. We're not gonna spend a whole heap of time in these buildings as they get very warm very quickly. So watch your steps, follow me. And if there are any questions I do not answer inside, you can feel for the accent once we exit. Now this is one of those areas that photography is unfortunately not allowed. Ladies, after you have a benefit in this importation because our molasses here is richer in sugar, lower in nutrients. Theirs is richer in nutrients, lower in sugar. We put the two things together, we now have the perfect base for rum making. And if you smell, taste, or experience, it's coming from the process the rum has to go through. 
We're about to see the third ingredient in a controlled environment, how we put these things all together, and then we're gonna have some fun with some tasting sessions, all right? All the ingredients right here together, this is it. This very simple setup here, this is all we need to make our rum at Mount Gay. We have local molasses, we have Caribbean molasses, we've got water, and we have yeast. We're gonna try these two types of molasses so we can see how different they are from each other. So here we go. I'm the kind of candy man for now. We have a stick. It's like treacle or licorice. Molasses is really good for you. It's good for your hair. It's good for your nails, your skin. High in things like potassium, has in lots of iron. Here we go. Cook with it. Bait with it. Yeah. Pardon me? Good for your heart. Molasses is a beautiful thing, isn't it? So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the heart of Mount Gay. You don't see a lot of things to press, prod, twist and turn. Even when you can't see them, people are walking around managing that everything is operating as it should. These are our pot stills. The two in the corner here are Spanish, and these two here on either side, these are Scottish pot stills. Now the copper is super important in distillation as it pulls away impurities. During fermentation, not only is alcohol being created, and congeners and esters and all the good stuff, there's also sulfates being created. When you put your sulfates into a copper pot still, they will become copper sulfates. They're a bit more dense, they not fall away to the bottom, they don't quite make their way through distillation. Welcome to our bond houses. We have four major bonds in this area, and at any given time, we can keep about 50,000 barrels on site. Welcome to bond number two, everyone. Come on in. All right. Now the idea of using barrels that are centuries old and dates back to the early days of sailing. But then you had to prove you came to Barbados by taking home some of our rum. Barbados in particular because we are away from everyone else. You have to be a really good sailor to actually find Barbados intentionally. Now in those earliest days, they would use something called a demijohn to transport that rum, but it's made of glass, so long term, it was not the most practical piece of equipment. They were banging, they were breaking, you lost your money, you lost your rum. Over time, they switched to barrels, which have been around for centuries, as early as 300 BC. This is where the idea of maturation was born. As the rum sat in the barrel, it became darker, richer, smoother, and altogether more palatable. When you take your rum out of your cast, that process is now over. This 12 is from 2011. So um, Eddie, who is our distiller, and you'll meet him here, he would not have started to put his kind of, uh, his um, hand on it yet. So we're kind of excited to see what the 2024 barrel will, uh, will be like. So if you'd like to taste this, it's, um, it's uh, just under 60%. And, um, one of the striking things about it is the bouquet and, and so on is starting to pick up that background of the sugarcane juice that it comes from, its heritage. Now we, we, we make our rum from juice, but we really are not in any way an agricultural rum because our method of distillation circumvents that. What happens is, is that uh, evaporator up there, it, it pasteurizes the juice. Just the, the mere fact that you're condensing it into juice and the heat involved, it pasteurizes. And that pasteurization does one thing that is significant to our rum production. It, it um, removes most or all the bacteria from the equation. So the, the yeast, which is Saccharomyces cerevisiae, that there is actually now completely dedicated to converting the sugars to alcohol. Phil, is he is effectively handcrafting the rum. He is intervening in a process that goes from, from fermentation, distillation to the final product. We're about to get on to St. Nicholas Abbey train. train. That's why we don't miss it higher. I think I'm missing it right here. 
This is such a fun part. I love this. I can't wait to when they extend it to Farley Hill. Correct me if I'm wrong, editing Sabrina, but I believe they're going to extend it to Farley Hill. Um, that's going to be so cool. But for now, we'll get to do the quick trip. Yeah, let's go. Here at George Washington House for the special, very exclusive event. Here we come. <laughs> um, I've never actually had the opportunity to be here before, so I'm very excited. So let's take a look upstairs. Look at that. So much history, so much information on Barbados in this building. Just this building alone, it's so critical. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to do this, but I'm going to try to find Barbados. I think we're here, and here it is. Barbados, beautiful. George Washington's room? Yeah. Wow. What the heck is this? Oh, it's stuck down? Is it? Oh. <laughs> okay, <laughs> see. Probably like a journal. Yeah. Yeah, you can wash up with this. Yeah, this uh, is actually uh, rules of civility. So he, oh, he it's had a actually, book. He had read this. Uh, or he actually wrote. He actually wrote down all the, uh, the all the rules of you know good nature, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Reproach none for the infirmities of nature, nor delight to put them that have infirmities in mind thereof. So like if somebody was like a little off in the head, don't, mm -hmm. don't be nasty. Oh, it's almost written like how um, Romeo and Juliet is. Look at that cabinet. Oh my goodness, so big and beautiful. Then his shoes over here. Just has some kind of luggage bag. This is very interesting, very cool. Oh, look at this old chest. Oops, not coming open. I wanted to open it. It's not coming open, but it's literally like made of. Is it possible this is made of a black belly shoe? Um, hmm, just maybe. Barbados. They did so for a number of reasons. First of all, sugar at that point in time had made Barbados the wealthiest. Of England's colonies in the West Indies. Barbados was a nation at that point in time being taken over by Jamaica, but nevertheless, sugar was so dominant and sugar had created a magnet, as it were, an attractiveness that brought good talent to the island. So we had one of London's premier doctors, 
establishing himself in Barbados, Dr. Hillary, and he accompanied by the Barbadian doctor, Dr. Lanahan, treated my brother Lawrence in this very same bedroom. I had to answer you the the more space between us? Yeah, there's another fighting arrow. Oh, they're not. Can we come back down here? Stay down. Is it back on barrels on the Oh my goodness, they're right. Look how close. Oh my god. Um, I'm not gonna okay. You ready? I'm going to be going. They're so tiny. Oh, oh wow. This is narrow. This I, can, is, I cannot walk normally here. If you're claustrophobic, this is not a place for you. I have Americans ahead of us. We'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> It's actually warm in here. I like how they have creepy strings. Yes, I know. It's, it's, it's perfect for the effect. You. It's not. Yeah, I wasn't expecting this. I can see why there was malaria. Yeah, I can see it. <laughs> Work. Oh, is it getting smaller? It does seem like it just it's getting, getting smaller. Yeah, okay, it just feels like it's getting smaller. Until <laughs> so you realize that you're stuck. <laughs> you gotta push. <laughs>
So if anybody knows uh, in Barbados when Barbadians go abroad, have children, and their children come back, they are Yankee Bajan, or Bajan Yankees. I'm the opposite. I'm a Yankee Bajan. Barbados is my adopted homeland and my heart and my soul. I did my PhD at the University of Florida in anthropology, and I've been working here for 30 years. And you're one of the best rumble people. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually <accurate. laughs> Yeah, I'm. Yeah, so I'm Rich Drake. I was born in Guyana, grew up in Barbados, teaching students in college numbers. But what you really want to know is where my mom took me to Guyana, which is that a very young teenager, uh, the fellas gathering together in their chain, going to shop. Carrying away a philosophy here. You have nothing, there's no such thing as a liquor age here. The child is torn it up to reach their hat on the couch and they can leave with a pipe and alcohol on the road. Excellent, excellent. So that's what it's like. Spice rum, um, coffee, and mobby bark. Not, not mobby syrup, mobby bark. All right. So we're, we're taking, we're taking you back. We're taking you back all the way back. Uh, I know. So things we go back and we talk about things that, um, in terms of slavery, that a lot of people don't want to bring up. Uh, mobby is one of the things that we have because of it. Right. Uh, mobby is something that is clear, clearly. Very close to my heart, and it's something that my grandmother taught me to make from scratch. And I still use her recipe today. Uh, and now I've actually infused her recipe with some coffee because I love coffee. Uh, and uh, I wish we could grow coffee here, that would be awesome. But we don't. So we do have more beer, so that's one of my favorite things to use. Uh, and Cooking again, Wednesday, the girl go fucking, she go fucking with somebody again. Um, with also these two gentlemen chose not to speak, I got up to give a toast. So, what I would like to do is ask everyone to raise their glass and to thank two institutions that believe in Barbados, believe in sustainability, and believe in the, the future of this country and the spirit, especially now that we're in the full month of the first year of the independent nation. So, well, Barbados National Day is not for a little while. It's the month, it's the month. But let us all just toast to the family seal and to our chef bartender, loving couple. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks a lot, Seth. Appreciate it. No. Yeah.